All right, so after all that helix stuff and habitat, uh, we're gonna go something a little bit more fundamental. Um, security and workflow for those who actually use Sitecore, who actually has security and workflow working on their systems. Yeah, yeah, that's what we thought, so. <laughs> and uh, when I talked to Brad, I said, you know, it's probably one of those things that get left out because normally, uh, and, and it's, it's kind of the problem with Psycho sometimes, one person can handle a whole website, you know, so, so normally you don't need uh, workflow or anything like that. However, the other reason why you bought Psycho is so that you have an authoring distribution ship. So you'd like to open it up to the different departments and those kind of things. So this is where the security and workflow comes into play. Now we're not gonna talk about all about security, uh, even though, and, and all about workflow, and even though it's fundamental, there's a lot in there, actually. Um, and when I say a lot, it's, you know, you can go on and on about how are the groups, uh, how are groups and roles and access rights and all those kind of things. And then on workflow, what are the different states? How, how do you extend it? How do you uh, connect it with your Active Directory and all those kind of things? So we can talk like a whole series of stuff just on security and workflow. But instead of doing that, we're gonna talk about something a little bit more fundamental and a little bit more real world scenario. So, um, which I'm hoping that you guys could use eventually also. So, um, I'm gonna start with just some quick fundamentals. When we talk about security roles, um, we normally, um, Sitecore already comes with um, uh, with uh, some default roles that you've seen already, Sitecore client authoring, Sitecore client design, um, Sitecore, uh, there's several of them. So you've probably seen it when you go to the, to the role manager. We call those functional roles. Uh, so I, even though they're basically the same type of objects within Sitecore, um, a functional role and a content role, the main difference is to us uh, as an architect is that a functional role is more about tasks of what you do in the system. Now when we switch to the content roles, it's more about access on which content you have access to. So you can kind of imagine this, visualize this by doing a matrix. Uh, so on the top could be your functional roles, so client authoring, admin, publisher, analytics, or whatever. And then on the left side would be the type of groups that might have access to the different type, uh, different areas of your site or different sites that you want people to have access to. So that's how we do it. And then you just do an X on which one should have, uh, should have those kind of rights. Okay, so, so we always separate the two type of roles into these two things, functional and content roles. So, um, and then obviously there's the security roles. You have your content editor security details. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. Um, there's the access viewer, which I'm sure you have seen that. There's the typical manager ones, the user manager, role manager, and then the domain manager. And you rarely use the domain manager because you add a domain in your config file anyway. And then there's security editor, which is where you actually assign the access stuff. So, um, just to make sure we know where things are, now, do you guys know where the content editor ac um, security details? Have you guys ever seen that? So, if you go to content editor, we're in this demo article, if you go security and you go to details, there's a new tab that comes up here, and you'll see what kind of rights there are on a particular content. It will show explicit rights, not the inherited ones. So, so if you gave someone, uh, of course this doesn't have much in there. So if I go, yeah, there's not much in here. So this is just a bare bone habitat. But anyway, so if you have something here, you'll, it'll list all the ones that you have, that someone or a group has access to on this particular item. So that's just the security details. Sometimes it's hard to see it on the access viewer the access viewer is a little bit more, you know, on a per, uh, you know, it's, it's using default anonymous. I could switch that to a different user to, um, let's say, a client authoring. What do they have access to? So this is a different view of the access rights for that particular role or user. The difference is that you have to do this on a per role, per user basis while the details, you get to see all of them on a particular content. 
So it's kind of the, the vice versa. So depending on what you need, use the one or the other, okay? All right, so that's really why I want to talk about that. So just simple ones. And then the workflow tools, um, there's the workbox, which you guys know, and then the content editor review tab where you actually do the submission and the approval of content, okay? So we've seen that a little bit. So what I want to do, oops, is actually uh, get into the business scenario already because uh, it'll take us a while to go through the workflow and actually setting it up. So. Here's the business scenario. You are opening up your site core, you just came up with a new section in there or something like that, and you want an offshore set of users to enter the content for you. Uh, your IT says they need to be part of the AD. So, so someone installs the AD module for you and then it's set up, right? Um, and then they only have specific access on the site. So for our example, we're gonna be using Habitat, so I'll tell you where that is. Um, so for our purposes, we've already defined in our uh, Rounded Cube domain, St. Louis Mo, three different user accounts and then an offshore uh, AD group called Offshore. Okay, so we've defined that already in our AD. You guys can definitely ask for that with your IT department. I have this bunch of users. Can you put them in a group so that I can give them access to Sitecore? You could definitely create your own within your Sitecore. Now, however, the difference is obviously if you need to have VPN access, sometimes they need to go through AD uh, uh, policies and stuff like that. So, so it probably needs to go through, uh, so they already probably be part of AD. So you might as well use those accounts. Okay, so, um, okay. so the task that they would do is add and update new content, uh, submit it for approval once completed, and then the environment that we're gonna be working in on this one, obviously we have our Active Directory. We're gonna be using the Habitat uh, install that Ben, that ben and uh, Gilbert were showing you guys. And then we are actually using the Sitecore publishing service, so if you guys see a little bit uh, different when I click publish, it's because it's the new publishing service that Sitecore has. It's in .NET Core, uh, so we have .NET Core in here, uh, and it's using that, and it's really fast. So if you guys want things, something really fast publishing, you guys may want to take a look at that. Uh, one thing about that publishing service too is um, it makes, it gets rid of what's called incremental publish, it gets rid of smart publish, all of that, and you have a dashboard to see if the publishing is done and those kind of things, so which is everybody wants to see. So, so that's why I kind of want to show you that a little bit uh, on, on this demo. Okay, any questions so far? No? Okay, so uh, we're gonna go through gotchas a little later. Um, the reason why I have to tell you about the, the environment, because since we're using Habitat, Habitat already comes with a lot of roles, like a lot. Like, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, each feature that you saw there, you might have a role for that one, so you only have access to that particular type of template or those kind of things. So, so there's a lot in there. Uh, and then there's also some default things that uh, the Habitat did to where it's a little bit of a gotcha, which you'll see, find out later. Um, like the experience editor may not be working fully that you want because it wasn't set up correctly. Um, but we'll discuss that as we go through. So first thing first is we know, I told you about the role, the, the cycle role. So this one's, this habitat is attached to our AD. So you'll see all those modules. It's kind of hard to see, but those says modules. It says foundation assets admin, foundation indexing admin, all these kind of things, that's, that came from Habitat. But um, in our world, you'll see our stuff called St. Louis Mo. These are the St. Louis Mo, which is our domain, and you see offshore in there. So that came, that came from our AD. So let's take a look at what's in there and make sure that we have those users our members. So we have offshore one, two, and three are the members, and that we got that from AD again. So, so that's all set up correctly for us by IT already. So the next thing I want to know is I just want to have I just want them to have access to about hab, about habitat. Okay? And they can only obviously um, submit it for um, just for approval. So I'll create content, update content, and then submit it for approval. Now um, one thing that we need to, so after we do that, 
uh, the other thing that I want to make sure is which workflow do we want. Now we're not going to set up workflow uh, on this one, but I just want to make sure this is more on the security side. We'll use the default workflow, which is the sample workflow. So you, you, should, get, you should have that already in Sitecore, um, but you can copy that and, and create your own workflow. Uh, bare minimum, you have a draft state, you have a waiting approval, and then there's the approval that automatically publishes it. So you can definitely add a lot more steps in there if you want to, if you require that. Um, as I said earlier, you could make the workflow more complex. We have clients to where they require like a, uh, like a different um, advertising agency to, to look at the ad and approve it. So it has to go outside the firewall, outside the CMS, so it needs to be previewed over there and then comes back in and then, and then gets approval and then gets published. So, so that could be part of it. There's the translation stuff. Uh, that could be another uh, part of the workflow, so you could create that kind of um, workflow as well. But for our purposes, for the demo purpose, we just have draft, waiting approval, and, uh, and approve. So under draft, you can do submit. Under awaiting approval, there's approve with test, approve. And then approve is just auto publishes it. So, okay, so that's what comes out of the box from, from Sitecore. All right, so let's go ahead and start. Um, let's go ahead, we told our users that um, our offshore users, so I have St. Louis Mo, offshore one in here, that they should now have access to Sitecore. So if I try to log in, it will give us this error. It says, you do not have access to the system if you think so. Obviously, they haven't been granted full access yet. So they may have, uh, they may have AD username and password. They can go through VPN, but not in Sitecore yet. Okay, so even though they're in the users uh, area or in the roles area, uh, uh, as an admin for Sitecore, I haven't given them any access yet, so, so that's good. So, so first thing first. So we look at uh, the security editor here. Uh, actually, we go to role manager. So here's the offshore. First thing first is that to give them access onto Sitecore. Okay, so let's do an add here is we just basically give them access to Sitecore client user. So if I do that, I don't even need to close this one and I switch over and log in again. I'm able to log in now, bare minimum. Okay, so good, that's good. So, all right, I can click on, I can change my password as need, need to be, so I have some access to a different control panel. So that's a good step. So remember that in IT world, give them as least permission as possible. So we'll go through that. So, so this is the least that they could do, so that's good. Even if I click on desktop, they don't have much either. So even as desktop, you only have control panel and the only application you have is the license information and those kind of things, so, so that's good too. All right, so I don't need to log out. So the next thing we do is now, well, now I need them to be authors, right? So I need to add Sitecore. And, and remember, you don't need a, a developer to do this. You guys can do this in your Sitecore. There's no coding or anything like that. So Sitecore client authoring. So that's the next thing. So now if I go back here and refresh my launch pad, now I get more stuff. So I get the content editor, experience editor, workbox, and those kind of things. So I should now have access even on the desktop side. I should now start to see those things. So okay, cool. That's great. All right. So now uh, if I go to the content editor, as since I don't have access, I'm not an admin, I don't see the templates or anything like that, so that's good. But however, we said that I only want them to have access under the about, under home, about habitat. So we just want them to have access to that one underneath, right? To create new, new content and those kind of stuff. So we don't really need them to see this. I don't need them to see, uh, they might need to see settings or global or something like that for global assets and those kind of stuff. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So now we're going and we're switching now we consider the site St. Louis Mo Offshore as the content role. And we're using, and then we're kind of giving it 
as members of the functional role, which is the users and the client authoring one. So, so it looks like it, uh, in terms of functionality, we got what we want, right? So um, now if you go publish, you know, you can't really do anything there. You can't publish or any stuff like that. So that's good too. So what we'll do now, I'll go ahead and close this one. Now I need to go to security editor and switch to offshore. Now I'm, I'm, I have offshore now. And then go to habitat, home, and then about habitat. So we only want them to have access to about habitat and underneath it. So the first thing I need to do is make sure they can't do anything under home, uh, local content, obviously. I don't need them to see the demo article, modules, more info. I'm sure you can do other ways of doing this uh, by removing inheritance and stuff like that. So depending on what you have on top of the hierarchy, you can do that. So for now, we'll do this. Um, so if I switch back to here, this is the offshore guy. Refresh that, habitat, and now I only see about habitat. So cool. So now, um, now I don't really need them to see local content either from the home, so I can just go ahead and get rid of this write and get rid of read here. Okay. All right, so now if I see that, all right, so I don't see that anymore. So now I only have that. Now, if I click on home, you can see you cannot edit this item because you do not have right access to it, which is good. About habitat, you do not have right access to it. Introduction, I do not have right access to it. So that's bad because I need to be able to create new content item, update uh, existing items under about habitat. So you have to explicitly give them that. So you should be able to write, rename, create, delete, Administer. Okay, so if I click those and switch to here and go back to introduction, now it says I can lock and edit it now. So great, good, right? Uh, and under about habitat, I can now I can now insert a new article. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that and just put test article here. Press OK. All right, so if you publish now, it's not in a final workflow step, which is good uh, because we don't want this offshore user to be able to publish. So, so that's good, so I can start entering some content. But if you see here, it seems like I can't do anything, right? Uh, even though I have it checked out. If I click on this edit, it will show that I can check it in and submit. But I can't edit the title. Okay, this is an issue with Habitat. Uh, it's not necessary because of Sitecore. This is Habitat because in Habitat, there's a role that removes basically some specific fields that you can uh, edit. So to do that, if you're using Habitat, let's go back to Role Manager, and you need to make Offshore or your group to be part of the modules feature I think, if I remember, page content, I believe. Page content admin. As I said, that's a, that's a habit, that thing. You normally don't need to do that. And now if I go to test article, now I can change it, okay? Okay, so normally you don't need to do that. Now, this goes the same way for, any questions so far? Normally you don't need to do that piece, so. Um, one other piece here, you can see that about Habitat, which is the parent of where we want the users to be able to enter stuff, is also editable. Well, so how are we going to prevent from doing that? What do you guys think? Any, any suggestion? Mm -hmm. Break inheritance? Okay, so let's see. Now the inheritance, it doesn't matter here because we want, I mean, I could explicitly put this green stuff on every content underneath about. So if you break inheritance, then you need to do it under there, right? But if they create new content, uh, then you need to give them those access again. So that won't work either. So any other suggestions on how we would make sure that the parent would not be editable by the user? Because remember, 
we have to put all this right from the top level here so that everything underneath it can be editable. All right. So the simple thing, which you guys probably have seen before and don't really know why it's there, is what the heck is this protect item? So if I click that and switch over to here, refresh, since I don't have admin rights as an offshore, if I click on about habitat, you cannot change it anymore. But I can still add articles in here, I can still edit my test article in here and those kind of things. Okay, Jess, the only gotcha there is that make sure you have your rights correct already before you protect that particular parent. Because other, um, otherwise, it's going to, because as you can see here, when I protect it, I can't change, I can't change any of the, see, it, it, it can't edit those. So make sure you just have that one right and then protect it afterwards, okay? All right, so it looks like we're done, right? All right, so next thing we do that I'll show you that we're not totally done is if we go to Experience Editor. So it should all work the same way under Experience Editor. So if I'm editing test article in here also, if I go up to um, About Habitat, you can see also here that I don't see the other the other stuff in here because I don't have access to it. Because remember, I am logged in as offshore, but if I go to, um, let's see, this is the actual site. So I can see all of their, all of the stuff there, but you don't see the test article in the menu yet, because it shouldn't be, right? If you're using, uh, if you're using Habitat though, uh, there's a gotcha uh, that the, the site itself is connected to the master uh, to the master DB, so that means you'll see the stuff uh, immediately. So make sure you switch that to the web, so that you don't see it. So, okay, uh, and we'll talk more about that later. All right, so I'm in the uh, content editor uh, in the page editor now, the experience editor now. And I see test article there. I can do my edits and stuff like that. Test article. Demo, okay, save that. Um, and um, I, you, know, you, you guys have seen this uh, on um, when um, uh, Gilbert was showing you this, this. Now, if I start clicking, oh, you know what? I wanna be able to see the, the conditions that I put in there for the personalization or, or A-B testing. I click on presentation, experience, versions, view, you see that I can't move? So this is a bug, I think. Uh, and if, if, I'm sure you guys have used inspect before, I, I get all this wonderful JavaScript errors. So, and that's the reason why it's not moving. So what do we do with that? So what happens is that we still have, there's two things that you guys can do. Um, so under, Oops. So under here, under the role, okay, you guys can add, if you're using Habitat, if you're using Habitat, you guys can use the, content, the Habitat uh, content author. That's the first one. If I add that, press OK, and switch back to here. And, uh, and, and that issue that I just mentioned earlier, it's not a Habitat thing, okay? But this is just one way to correct it if you're using Habitat. So now I can click through it, okay? So, so what if you're not using Habitat? So if we remove Habitat, what you need to do, okay, if I remove that, I just wanna show you again that it's not gonna, you're gonna start getting those errors again. see that okay the main issue with that is because of data sources um, as just as a, an author you don't have automatic um, uh, use of data sources and remember data sources are set up using um, the components and the components in cycle world if you're adding components and those kind of things it's not necessarily authoring 
like entering text or choosing an image, what, it's, what you're actually doing is designing the page. If that makes sense. So, uh, so to, do, to actually make it work, if you're not using um, Habitat, is you use this really old, too old Sitecore roles, Sitecore author and Sitecore designer. So now I added those two. If I switch back to here, I should now be able to click through. Okay? All right, so that's, um, so now I think I have my users set up to, uh, to do this. So if I do test article here, if I refresh this, remember I change it to demo, uh, test article demo. Now I'll go ahead and submit it. Press OK. Okay, so it's been locked. It's not yet publishable. So if I go as an admin again, which is, I'm an admin here. I go to my work box. I can see my test article here, right there. This is a sample workflow. I approve that. It's gone. And now, if I go to the site, And, and it's not there yet. There you go, test article. Okay, so, um, so I think it's working. Uh, I wanna just quickly, any question on that? Just to kinda quickly show you guys the publishing service. No, good. So here's the publishing service if, uh, I can't publish there. Uh, if I go here in the content editor, if I publish, if I just click on publish, um, go to test article, demo two, save that, click on publish. This is what it looks like now. And you can see it's very simple. It shows you the targets and the language which you've seen before, but it doesn't show the, the incremental or, um, or smart publish. So, because this is really fast, so if I publish that, it will say, do you want to open the publishing dashboard? So I can click on that, and it actually shows you what's going on uh, uh, publishing-wise. So if you have a lot of authors, this is a good uh, little uh, dashboard to see, okay? I think, I think that's it. Any questions? Yeah. Right. Thanks.